Okay, so now I want to explore in this bit more detail something which I've just kind of briefly alluded to, which is the notion of proper time. So as we've seen, we have our space time, just sticking with two dimensions, keep things simple. And now within that space time, we know that essentially what I've drawn, this picture, we refer to it as a reference frame. Essentially this represents an observer that sits at the origin of the reference frame and the reference frame just represents the kind of number values that they assign to the events of space-time. Now this set of coordinates defines an observer who views space-time. We can equally now define an observer that, or just an entity that exists in the space-time that is going to be viewed by this observer. And essentially it's going to be described by what we've called a world line which is just some trajectory through our space-time that essentially at every point specifies the location of some particle within that space-time and we're kind of measuring the progression of this particle using this time coordinate axis associated with this reference frame. And so the key thing we need to remember is that this world line we can write as a parameterized function. And when we started writing this down, I just said that we were going to use some arbitrary new real parameter, lambda, which is in no way connected to this t time coordinate, which remember only belongs to the person that sits at this reference frame. We have to introduce some new parameter to parameterize all of our world lines. So introducing an arbitrary parameter like this is okay, but we'd like to have some sort of more intrinsic or fundamental definition for how we can parameterize this curve. So the way that we're gonna now parameterize this curve is by essentially identifying a new choice of parameter instead of this lambda, we're gonna define a parameter which we're gonna call tau, which is gonna have the name proper time. And what this tau is going to be is essentially it's just going to be the time that you would measure if you were this particle traveling along this world line. So let's just say we're some orange particle. This world line exists within a reference frame, the reference frame of this observer. Why don't I now just for clarity Let's label this reference frame as the observer A, and then let's say that this other thing, this particle moving within the reference frame, let's call it B. But now what we need to realise is that this world line I've drawn, this is how A views the trajectory of this particle. But now this particle itself is going to also be able to construct its own reference frame, essentially the reference frame within which this particle just sits at the origin and doesn't see itself moving at all. So we're going to have to have some kind of way to reconcile or realise that the, the world line as viewed by A is essentially only how that world line appears in this coordinate system. And now by realising that this particle B is going to also essentially define its own reference frame, it's going to have its own set of coordinates, so we might call these x hat and t hat, or c t hat rather. So now we realise that this b particle is has its own reference frame, it's going to have its own definitions of what it thinks space and time are. Okay, so we have to realise that this particle b is going to have its own entirely different definition of what it thinks times are being measured as. And so essentially now what we do when we define proper time is we say, okay, well let's just take the reference frame B that is describing the particle following this world line and let's just use the time that this particle measures, this t hat, let's just use that as our parameter. 
and yeah, so we're going to so let's just use this t hat now as our parameter. So just essentially what this means is that if you're in your own reference frame, so this is the the B reference frame. This is the reference frame of the particle seen to be moving by A, but in the reference frame of the particle that's seen to be moving, it's just going to be stationary. And now essentially that means that in the, the reference frame B of this particle, all it's going to be doing is just traveling along a world line that kind of stays stationary within the B frame, so it doesn't move within X hat, you just simply follow a world line that just travels up the time axis. Because essentially, to be stationary in space-time, you're not moving at all through space, so your world line is just simply a line which essentially just kind of measures the elapsing of time through your reference frame. So this is how the world line is going to appear in the B reference frame. I could, if I wanted, give it the name x hat, and now I'm going to tell or say that we're going to start using this new parameter tau, and I'm now going to just make this identification. Well, the tau parameter is just this t hat axis, so I'm just going to relabel the t coordinate in the B frame. I'm just going to relabel it as tau. Okay, so this is how we define, or how we realise proper time. Essentially, it's just the time coordinate that you would measure if you were stationary within a reference frame. And now we can kind of have a nice visualisation for what this is going to look like. Essentially, when you're stationary in a reference frame, you just sit at the origin. You don't move within space of the reference frame. You simply just... Effectively, you just travel through time as time elapses, and so your world line just simply points straight up along the time axis. And so now, as this particle B measures the elapsing of time within its own reference frame, this now is essentially how we parameterize the world line as it appears in any other reference frame. So the important thing to realise now about this proper time is that it's essentially fixed for all observers that are measuring that proper time. So essentially if you're in a reference frame, no matter how fast you move as viewed by another reference frame, you're always stationary in your own reference frame, and so your world line in your own reference frame is always just simply pointing along the time axis, and so essentially your world line is always just going to represent this tau proper time.